Kia ora my brothers and sisters, we're here at the Mullum Community Garden where I'm with um, Trillian Branson and Jocelyn who are doing a lot of work with sound and motion healing and extrapolations of that. So I'm going to talk with them both about what they do and how they combine their energies in, in specific fields of expertise <laughs> into what they've developed. So we'll start with you, Trillian. And um. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your your journey through through sound healing and your interest that, that got you onto your journey. Pretty much, I've been um, rapping and performing for uh, about twenty years. Yep. And about five years ago, I gave up performing because I was kind of disillusioned with the whole public club kind of thing. Yeah, fair enough. And there wasn't really an outlet for what I wanted to do. There's not, is there? Like, in terms of, yeah, there definitely needs a bit more of that in the world. And so, I just concentrated on um, writing songs for the internet, because it seemed that um, that was where my my only audience was. Yeah, well, I know, I know a lot of your tunes on YouTube have got a lot, a lot of hits in terms of talking about fluoride and different specific topics and using that as, as awareness, a way of sharing knowledge yeah. and then I sort of contemplated the idea of what if we could get all of the healing frequencies like what Royal Raymond Wright was working with and combine them into music yeah that Oi. <laughs> when people when people listen to it, they didn't realise they were being healed at the same time. That's true. Yeah, I've, I've, I've contemplated that as, as putting that into the music. And, and as a singer and a rapper, I also feel the frequency I emit when I'm in a real in the zone. You know, it's it's healing in itself as well. Mm. So that with frequencies, you know, you can do some powerful stuff. Mm. And again, people just listen to it, and it's in their subconscious mind. It's doing doing work in there and geometrically aligning them with specific patterns and sound frequencies. We're multitasking here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know who this dog is, but I think she needs a bit of love. Keeping but, it real, right? Yeah, now. we're keeping it real. <laughs> I'm just trying to get rid of it for a second. Alright, so anyway, continue. So I yeah, pretty much started a, a discovery on what frequencies I should use within the music. Yep. And I decided um, instead of going on Google, I would ask people in real life. Yeah. And so I got my camera and um, started filming people, what their perfect frequencies were. What their perfect frequencies were. So, um, which led me into like the whole sound healing world. Uh-huh. And, and then I went to Bali on a holiday and to work on some music and discovered there was a whole world of sound. Well, pretty much everyone in the sound healing community at some stage yeah, during the year. <laughs> at some stage during the year, we'll be going through Bali yep. for, on their tours. And I thought that this would be a great place to be, to kind of meet yep. everyone in the world involved in the sound healing yep. and um, kind of frequency and based work. Yeah, and so I decided to move there, and pretty much when I decided to move there, um, some friends of mine who also make films yeah. took an interest in following me, and following me back up my old life, and evolved into my new life, mm -hmm. and, my new, and my journey. Yeah. So I've been in Bali for the last um, eight or nine months, working on a new album, and experimenting with sound, and also being the assistant to a sound yeah. healing therapist. Cool. So, um, and I've kind of emerged out of that with my own sound journey. Absolutely. So you're talking about specific frequencies. Are there any particular frequencies that you've that you've found? Have been more powerful than others, or, or I mean, what, what's what's your your research and experience led you to? Well, there's a lot of um, a lot of people don't think 
it matters what what the frequency is. Yep. And then there are some like hardcore. It's five twenty eight. Yep. Everything has to be tuned to um, four thirty two instead of four forty, which is the concert pitch. Yep. Um, so yeah, I kind of got to the end of it, um, thinking that there are so many opinions. Yes, uh, that I wouldn't worry about <laughs> any of them. Yeah, but I'll still um, incorporate incorporate them, but not really um, not really point out which is which. Okay. Because people maybe will come with it with their own expectation of what that frequency is supposed to do. True. True. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's. I, I know from my study of that as well that I found there were a lot of, specific, of numbers and it all seemed to resonate down to geometry and how specific shapes are formed and, and all the notes seem to correlate to the zodiac and, and, and all and, and then human biology. So the, the study of sound frequency led me through such a spectrum of, of conscious experience and different manifestations of consciousness. So it seems that this world is just a big plethora of, of different sound frequencies, and you know, I know I know some of them are very pure, some are, some are very powerful, but they're all they're all beautiful and powerful in their own way, aren't they? Well, the nature doesn't make just one sound. No, no, I, and I know I was I was looking for that a while. Like, what is the one God? What's the one sound? And it's like they're all expressions. It's, it's almost that the, the musician is, is is the God in it all. You know, is the the creator of the sound. So, so what I discovered um, whilst working with Shervin is that in nature all sounds from the spectrum um, appear and for us to be healthy we need to be um, exposed to all frequencies in the spectrum. Oh, okay. So, so, yep. um, so what Shervin does and what I've been trying to do as well is um, an entire range of frequencies from very low to really high yeah. tiny sounds. Um, and, and, have you, and, and, and along that spectrum of, of, um, of frequencies, have you tried to do specific sounds traveling up the, the spectrum? Like, yeah, like, you know, like, have, you, have you put in like chakra sounds and uh, is, is that? Not specifically, I didn't, don't want to focus on that. Okay. But the concept with um, having a lot of sounds is that your body might need only one frequency. Oh, so I see where you're getting with the Royal Rhyme and Rafe thing. Or, 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 you know, you might need your kidney frequency or there's some, some <coughs> something more etheric. So, so through the journey of your album, the idea is it'll cover all these frequencies and one of them will touch you in a, if, in you a, need it. if you need if it if you need it and otherwise it's just an, an enjoyable ride look through, through the sound journey and are, are, you, are you rapping in your new album there is some rap yeah but it's kind of spoken word does it seem it seems like it might be a bit more mystical it's a little bit more but i've tried not to change my style too much Absolutely. I guess that journey all around kind of led you that you know we're all unique and it's and it's our sound frequency that makes us us. So also, what is different to my journey um, is I do have a lyrical content and I'm trying to guide uh, the listeners' thoughts a little bit. Yeah. Into like I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Journey with the lyrics. Yes, I, I know that from from my lyrics as well. As I'm, I'm always trying to make them make realizations throughout the song, not and often not attacking the specific point, but dancing around it and how, helping people hopefully to, to understand how beautiful they are or, or or how what the state of the world is and what we're needing to do really, mm. which is a good breakdown. Um, all right, so you focus a lot on sound, and I know you, Jocelyn, are doing a lot in dance therapy, motion therapy, and anything that is healing movement. <laughs> so, so what what got you into that? Where where did that journey begin, and how did, uh, how did it go? As a youngin, 
And yep. coming into the portal, my consciousness found this place really weird. Yes. Uh, and very much, I suppose, at an early age, like, what is this place? Who are these people? How do I get these people? How do those people about those people? What is this body? Well, this is really weird. Yes, isn't it? So much, <laughs> so much happening. Yeah. Oh. And um, also this sense of, personally, that I wasn't from here. So um, my path has been embodiment and to be here fully. Um, but also in that time, as a younger person, of like not really knowing what I was doing here or why, I, it created an early inquiry of what is my purpose, what is my mission. Absolutely. Um, probably out of desperation around all the weirdness, just to tell mm -hmm. me what to do so I could go home. Um, and so that led to like sincere um, inquiry about what I'm here to do and to create. And around that was consistently was dance, uh, prayer, anything spiritual, esoteric, occult oriented, telekinesis, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, the kind of fun stuff that all five year olds are into it, you know? <laughs> it is. I remember when I was young, I was like, telekinesis seemed like a very plausible thing. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you on that topic, just, <laughs> uh, uh, what have you experienced in, the, in, in that field? I don't think I've manifested that yet. No, we're, we're almost there. Almost we're just, because, uh, there's some blockages still. I know funny. it's possible, um, but and there's some old personal blockages in my psyche that haven't been bypassed yet around that. But I was also very much interested, you remember that movie Firestarter with Drew Barrymore? I was like, uh, pyrokinesis, cool. Yeah, don't need to really focus on that. Um, astral projection, that kind of thing. So, anywho, over time, um, it's been more about being here, being here, being here, and finally, Earth is like, wow, this place is really awesome. It it's is so when you when you when you get really grounded here into your body and learning to really love, you can fall in love with this place. Yeah, it's very special. It is. So, um, Prayer consistently has been the weaving force, and I've been, in terms of technique, studied Pan-African dance, um, and much younger, ballet, jazz, tap, then high school, modern, contemporary, then as a young adult in New York City, samba, Haitian, West African, and Martha Graham dance. Wow. At the same time that I was introduced to Jiva Mukti Yoga, which is a very holistic and athletic form of yoga practice. Same time I was going to like just spawn just because I wanted to Bible study in Hell's Kitchen with like a whole bunch of weird awesome people from all around the world and different socioeconomic spectrums. Cool. Cool. And also massage, which has been consistent. I started massaging when I was five. So mm. um, through prayer and the request for integration, it all just seems to come together. And um, I feel that I help people remember that. Um, Fun is a stream that is meant to be um, forward in our lives. Sometimes I forget it. But yeah. that transformation can be fun, and that there are times when we go through a lot of thickness and density and have to do the hard unlayering. But there's also a point where you can continue to do that self, have that self knowledge flow, yeah. in more pleasurable, joy, joyous, light ways. Yeah, and dance is yeah. a real expression of joy, you know, the, the real expressive thing. And I've definitely found through my, my practices and my studies that that just moving is so good for you. The, the body's not meant to be stagnant. We're, we're living beings. And that just moving around gets all your atoms moving. It gets your blood flowing. It gets it gets your being really activated. You're, even your DNA. I mean, the way your DNA responds and to frequencies is, is, is so much based on our, on our movement. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a powerful thing. Yes. And, and and I know that you're 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 doing a very you're integrating a lot of fun into your practice. What what to what your practice is now? Well, oh gosh, what are my practices now? Like my practices of meditation. Are you talking about like the personal level or what I'm offering professionally? Okay. What you what you offer? Maybe a bit of both, okay. really, because they're both kind of the same. You know, like being in terms of personally, it's like being present and always like testing the the boundaries of discipline, like. Um, mm. to see how much the discipline is integrated or, or you know, when I need to create that structure again yeah. before I tip off into the, you know, the neurosis point. So kind of like playing with that yeah. space often through uh, living meditation and a lot of gratitude. And then uh, also I've received this program called Hoop Yogi that combines Hoop with yoga and mindfulness meditation. And our 
foundational pose is centered pose, where you find yourself rooted in the center of your personal universe. And so the hoop really helps you define that ultimately is to create a return to the centered pose, whether or not you have that external hoop around you. Wow. So that's another personal practice of being aware of what's not sounds, there. It sounds really beautiful. It, it makes it sound like you're the center of your own solar system. We are. Yeah, and that's a, re that's a really good analogy. It's like, you know, we're like this, this beaming light of, of consciousness yeah. and things gravitate around us that we call our life and our experience. So that's like, it just seems really beautiful that the, the hula hoop in there. And it makes it really accessible. I'm just like Jody into taking maybe these ancient things or these, these depth-oriented practices and making them inclusive or offering them in a really inclusive yeah. It's, yeah. acceptable way instead of a heap of a toy and music which touches everybody anywhere oh. so pervasive so just to create space that's a big thing to re recognize that there is an observer and to have some distance between all their thought content can be massively healing absolutely yeah. and between you you've, you've, you've got you we're got, in love no, just, <laughs> absolutely. We, we should be in love we all should be we're in love, in love. We're, I'm in love with you this yeah. Place. yeah. Oh, yeah. So beautiful here, <laughs> Madam Community Garden Center. But anyhow, um, so so you guys together have really brought this this motion and and sound, this kind of this festive ex expression of human consciousness into one experience that you're trying to share with others. We were conduits, and we put out a lot of prayers for each other, so to speak. So now it's in the play. Yeah. See how we're dancing together organically yeah mm -hmm. and it's at least for me it's very it feels very fulfilling to be able to, to collaborate with trillion and musically and create obviously creatively and to kind of speak a similar language or have complementary desires and to like just have fun again yeah playing and to it's see what people's reactions Absolutely, because I, I like to break things down to their, to their most minimal, you know, because there's this big spiritual world and it's very intricate. There's all these practices, modalities, but fun and happiness is something we can all relate to. Yeah. And if something's fun while you're doing it, then you're going to keep on doing it and you're going to expand that experience within your life and bring more joy in. So your practice has got to be fun. If you're sitting there with your, your prayer beads and you're not, you're not digging it, <laughs> you got to feel it. It's got to be good. It's got to feel good, doesn't it? That reminds me of just one day, I was raised in a very Christian paradigm, and I was in church one day, and I'm grateful for the, like, the habit of that space, and the structure yeah. of that space, yeah. but I just remember being like, oh gosh, okay, well, we only have half an hour left, okay, fine, and then after that, we're gonna, I was like, you know what, spirit doesn't want me to, like, be counting the clock as no. a form, of, that's not praise, so it's like, dance for me is church, you know, going to ecstatic dance, it's, I mean, that's just the word that I'm using, but that that um, space of reverence and joy and connection mm. without distraction. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Powerful stuff. Mm. Powerful and it's beauty. So, so your, your body is like your temple, your church, yeah. and, and your practice is... is ex yeah, I like that. I like the old solar system thing as well. Yeah. It's, all, it's all, all bringing it back here with the power as, as conscious yeah. creators, because... This is what we got, you know? We're working from here outwards, so it's sure. and obviously inwards as well. So is there anything else you would like to, to share about your specific service that, and, and, and what you guys are doing together? Hmm. With a loud voice as well, the, the camera's <laughs> quite far away. Woo. I guess we don't really need to explain. Explain what? <laughs> the together thing. Oh, well, dance meditation with sound <laughs> journeying together and influence with live, with vocalization, sounding. Some of Trillian's words are shared and we're inviting others or the community to come in and kind of mm. sing those powerful words of poetry to each other. And then Jody embellishes his um, compositions with the percussion and other instruments as well as rapping and singing so yeah it's really cool yeah so yeah <laughs> lot, lots happen on different lots of different dimensions yeah. but it's also really 
just to, just to a show, just, just something to participate. Yeah, just a festivities. <laughs> just something to try out. Yeah, yeah, why not? Absolutely. So it sort of ends with um, well, the last part is people lie down and you know, just experience the music without moving. Yeah. And then their bodies can sit in. Yeah. yeah. Sort of motion. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Sounds like fun. And and I know you guys um, have websites and whatnot oh, yeah. where people can, can check out what you do. Yes. Well, I'd love to invite your audience to come to Bali. Bali. And dance and sing with me and my dear sister, Lisa Gettle, who leads community vocal experiences to help people overcome public speaking and singing. And just remember that singing and dancing are our birthrights our direct pathway to joy. So that's yeah. every March in Bali and that URL is dance and sing in Bali. Perfect, all right. Com. And you, my friend Trillian? Um, Trillian.com, I think. Trillian.co.nz. Co.nz. Kiwis, by the way. NZ. Hey, we've got a song together, by the way. Check that out if you haven't already. Yeah, what's it called? New Zealand Not For Sale. Oh, it's a bit political, but. That's good. Those were the days, you know, those are what we're experiencing then. Trying to make a change through the system. Kind of step back from that. Now we're in our own little creative sphere. What makes us happy? Yeah. Just sound of music. I more um, came to the conclusion that I couldn't, I couldn't make any change unless um, I helped change the individual. Yeah. And this is what my journey. This is what the music is about. Yeah. It's helping people realise that um, they are one, existing and one. The sacred hoop. Yes, and that's where the origins of, of unit and uni and universe come from. We're all unized. And so when we realize that we can exist individually within our community, yeah. then we don't have to um, put faith in what the government has to offer us. We can put our faith in ourselves and our community. Yes, beautiful. And this is like... Community garden. Yeah, this is an example, is of example. manifested community spirit. People working together and creating their higher visions together, which at the end of the day benefits everyone, doesn't it? Mm. And the government doesn't help grow the plants, do they? <laughs> no, Na nature. No, but it the, grows. It is. Yeah, it's just it's it's natural, very very natural. Mm. And and one one last thing to end it on, like like I mean sound. Music and dance have got to be the oldest forms of culture there are. Okay. Like, what culture on this planet didn't have song and dance? Like that was their worship and their enjoyment. It was, it was offered a, offered a, a large part of their community experience and their culture, right? Eh? Yeah, and it's kind of most often we're segregated or segmented from remembering that. Yeah. Or to come together in that outside of like traditional institutions. We can sing and dance anytime. We should sing and dance. Like in the closing of this wonderful offering. Shall we? Yeah. I think also people, um, <laughs> people have just learned um, to become the audience. Oh yeah, that's a so good point. So they're looking for entertainment rather than yeah, entertaining themselves. Participate. participate, yeah, participation, absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. So, so get involved. Get Move into your it. Body. Yeah, just embody that. Embody that funness and joy. Grow a beard. <laughs> shave your head. Grow a beard and shave your head. Oh, that's just some spoken word, eh? Do you do freestyle as well, Trillian? Not very good. I did the freestyle in there, alright? I'll interject some time of Alright. As I step into the garden, life of a shaman, keeping calm in. When I'm moving and I'm grooving and I know that I'm losing but I'm gaining at the same time. See the flame shine, see the fire and ignite. Let the chakras align, let the kundalini rise to the spine. Know what it's like, I recline, just chilling out with the people. It's all good cause it conquers the evil. Break it down now.